Okay, it's seven o'clock according to the walk clock on the wall, and I'll call a regular meeting of the Buckhannon City Council to order. I ask you to join me in a moment of silence, please. Thank you. We'll respect the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Don't have any uh, guests this evening, except do we have some Wesleyan students? We do. And it's our tradition <coughs> that uh, we ask you to stand up where you are, Face the camera, tell us your name, where you're from, and what your major is. Please start over here. My name is Destiny Tunstall. I'm from Brentwood, Maryland, and my major is criminal justice. My name is Audrey Schiffel. I'm from Cobaba, France. Uh, my major is political science and history. My name is Timothy Brown. I'm from Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and I am a music major. My name is Latia Stone. I'm from Wisconsin, and I'm a political science major. Welcome. Glad to have you all. Mm -hmm. uh, Department Board reports. Uh, City Administrator Michael Doss. Yeah. First, uh, I want to go over before I get into the into the meat of my report. I just want to update you on our our, our general fund financial report uh, ending in October 2014. <coughs> you should have a copy of that in your packet. I uh, just want to note that the total revenues to date um, are $1,526,117.85. Uh, Our total expenditures for the current fiscal year are $1,156,185.37. Um, this is an excess of approximately $369,932.48 revenues over expenditures. Again, I always give you the, the, the summary report. Uh, if you'd like a little bit more of a comprehensive report just, report, just see me after the meeting or give me a call at the office. I'll be happy to give you a little bit more detailed report. Um, before I get into the uh, statement of assets um, for some of our funds, a few old business items. Um, in regards to our home rule, uh, the city of Buchanan continues to work on draft ordinances uh, for the establishment of our enterprise zone for economic development tax incentives as well as ordinance legislation uh, for certified and experienced part-time officers to assist with the Buchanan Police Department, which are two of the four canons in our home rule application. Um, it's extensive process of working with those, and uh, we'll be getting council's input um, as, we, as we move along. Uh, the next item under old business are police and fire fees. Uh, the city of Buchanan continues to work on the establishment of a proposed police and fire fee um, ordinance so we'll have a little bit more information uh, to come on that as well. Um, one thing I want to propose under new business and, and our home rule, our home rule ordinance is dealing with our enterprise zone and, and our part-time officers and the canons of those two, as well as our as, our, as well as our police and fire fees. Um, we had a work session a few months ago. I got a lot of great feedback from council on that session, and I'd, I'd like to uh, throw out this tonight to request uh, council to approve another work session uh, in particular to discuss police and fire fees and some other items related to some capital projects as well as um, some of the criteria as we established our enterprise zone uh, and our tax incentives through our home rule um, through our home rule program the suggested date that I have is Monday December the 1st at 9 a.m. so Monday December the 1st at 9 a.m. but I'm open to whatever I'll throw that out there real quick but I would love to have a work session with you. I, I would uh, respond to that, uh, Michael. I, I think that was an excellent work session. We should do that again. Um, December the 1st, I don't think I can make it myself because I have a uh, commitment with a planning retreat for Mountain Cap. They've asked me to be there. So I would prefer a different date. But I really, I really would like to attend another workshop. I think it was very informative for all of us sitting up here and uh, you know it was a great great job that you did and I think it's something that we need to really discuss the issues that the uh, the community needs to be involved in. 
That's that's just my. That's not a good. If it me. was on a Monday, David could and Michael, could you do it like four thirty, four o'clock? Does that work for you, Dave? A later meeting. Or Monday's out of question for you. Well, I I would I do not want to miss that meeting, so I will do. You know, if I can go to seven hours at the workshop, I'll make sure I'm here if you have a meeting later. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do over the next few days. I'll, I'll try to contact you all individually and try to work out something so we don't debate this okay. you know, tonight. Yeah. But yeah. I just want to get a general idea. And I, I want to have that meeting with you. It's very progressive. And yeah. and um, I, I think it will assist myself and, and Mr. McCauley when we're drafting some of these ordinances on this particular issue. Um, the next item that I have under my report, you should have several pages. Uh, noted as statements of assets. Um, I do want to report on several several of our funds we, we sometimes don't have too much attention to. It. Um, the first one is our municipal stabilization fund. Uh, we do have our statement of net assets, our financial statement uh, for the fiscal year 2013-14. Our municipal stabilization fund, just to remind you again, is sometimes referenced as our rainy day fund. Uh, we ended the fiscal year with uh, let's see five hundred thousand seven hundred and ninety one dollars so that's how much we have in our rainy day when we ended the fiscal year 13 14 five hundred thousand seven hundred ninety one dollars um, flood control again one of our more obscure funds uh, we ended the 2013 fiscal year with nine thousand three hundred and twenty dollars uh, my anticipation with the money that we have remaining in our flood control and speaking with our city engineer Jay Holland would be to actually utilize some of those funds to assist with our flood management, our flood control project, that four and a half miles that Jay's referenced in the riverbank. Uh, obviously that $9,000 is not going to make really a significant dent, but we're looking to maybe expend money out of that for, for that particular project. Um, the next line and the next statement of assets and financial statements ending fiscal year 13-14 is the Municipal Building Commission. Uh, again, the Municipal Building Commission uh, one of its responsibilities is, is the financier, the holder of our um, National Guard Armory Conference Center and the city's portion of that. Um, really, it's a pass-through account. Uh, at the end of 13-14's fiscal year, we ended with $101,000 in cash. Of course, all of that will ultimately be expended out um, for the remainder of the invoices we're receiving for the conference center portion of the Guard. To be specific, 100,000 of that 101,000 is money that we received from the Upshur County CBB, and then we retain $1,000 back to keep the account active, which will ultimately and already has went into the uh, the water department for fiscal year 14-15. And then the final one is just a statement of net assets for our library fund um, and the expenditures. Um, actually, revenues and expenditures are zero. But we ended the year in with the library fund. Of course, the library is responsible for overseeing overseeing the operations in those funds. And we're just a pass through on those as well. Um, so that's all I have for my report. There is an item under me uh, noted planning commission report. And I also notice on the agenda that that's also mentioned under G2. So if it's all right with you, Mayor, I'd like to just read Mr. Clemens' report. That's okay in relation to the. Um, I'll find it here. There Can we, we ask you some questions on the financial? Sure. Program? Go ahead. Sorry. The uh, municipal stabilization fund. You said it was five hundred and seventeen thousand somewhere. Five hundred seventy. So seven ninety one. Okay. Mm -hmm. The uh, what's the highest the city's ever had? Do you, do you, do you recall? Or do you know? What's the highest in the rainy day that mm -hmm. we've had? Yeah. We we have not had a rainy day fund. We we have not had one. What we've had we first started this three years ago. Okay, and what are we years. allowed to uh, have cumulatively in that <clears throat> fund under state? It's 30% 30, 30 of, your, of, your, of your budget, your general fund budget. Okay. So we're, we're looking at roughly 1.1, 1 1.2, yeah. which is allowed by law, and that's and, all we can do. And are you making a projection? What do you think our stabilization fund will achieve by the end of this fiscal year? Well, uh, it's something that we can talk about as we in the final quarter of this fiscal year. Uh, once we've met all our revenue projections, we can take a look at our existing fund balance and, and council can make a determination. As of right now, we have no money appropriated or budgeted for uh, to put into the stabilization fund for this current fiscal year. Um, but it's certainly something we can entertain the final quarter of this year if we want to um, 
if we want to put money in there, and it's also something we can entertain for next budget year as well. But for this fiscal, for this budget year, we we made a determination not to put anything in at this time. So but you probably anticipate that we will have the ability to increase that. Yeah, council should have the opportunity to make a decision about adding that in the in the final quarter of this fiscal year. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Michael? What's up? If it's okay, I'll read Rich's ahead, report yes, as well. Um, okay, this is this is to council, uh, the mayor, the mayor, council, myself, and and and, and Dave McCauley. Recommendations of the Buchanan Planning Commission. Uh, I'm going to pull a little Dave McCauley and read to you. <clears throat> On October 28, 2014, the Buchanan Planning Commission made the following recommendations to the Buchanan City Council. Number one, to recommend rezoning the recently annexed property of ADS slash Delta from R1 single family residence to I industrial. This would allow the recently annexed property to be used in the same manner as the current portion of the ADS property. It should be noted that there are concerns regarding the levels of dust generated in the current area by ADS operations, which is a violation of ordinance 244 section 627-J. The zoning officer was directed to communicate the concerns with ADS and monitor the compliance. Second recommendation, <coughs> unanimously recommend for adoption of the Buchanan Comprehensive Plan 2020 and as the comprehensive plan for the city and to enact such resolutions and or ordinance as needed for formal adoption as may be required by the state code. A copy of this has been provided in a separate notebook and is available on the city website for review and adoption. Third recommendation is to recommend to the City Council taking the necessary action or actions to rescind the recently adopted Ordinance 383 College Zone. It should be noted that the Planning Commission may deem to hold additional discussions to provide additional recommendations to City Council regarding the issues involved. So you have in front of you recommendation one under number two to adopt the Buchanan Comprehensive Plan 2020. We're saying motions that we adopt the plan. Got it. Well, I think there's resolutions and stuff that now have to be have to be created in ordinances formally yes, formally sir. adopting that. Actually, Mayor, all three of those matters I believe are going to require action by council via ordinance. So those will be yeah. ready by next meeting. Well, maybe some of them. <laughs> I, I, I think not, awful. we have dropped dead date on that. Uh, the comprehensive plan, plan, plan is really is year for some the yeah. most expedient. Right. Are you asking, Mr. Mayor, for a motion to approve the Buchanan 20? Maybe, maybe that's not in order right now. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I, I believe you have the recommendations of the Planning Commission before you via Mr. Clemens' report. The council could take up uh, <coughs> one, two, and three tonight to instruct the city attorney to prepare the necessary ordinances as you go through those one two and three but i think you should consider those as three separate motions three separate motions thank you i have a question i'm, I'm going to step out of my role as administrator maybe step into it i've had a chance to look at this comprehensive plan and, and i don't see where we're talking about complete streets can someone on the planning commission talk to me about that because i know as a council in previous councils that was the direction that we we were directed to go into and i provided information on that i don't see it unless i'm missing it somewhere but of course, there's language in there that still references 2015, and there's office holders that are no longer office holders, but that's all cosmetic. But I don't see anything in there on complete streets, and I was a little taken back by that, to be quite honest with you. I don't know. Well, you had it. requested that be included when you um, attended a planning commission meeting. And I provided probably four pages of, of language, mm -hmm. and I. I didn't anticipate that all that language would be included, but I don't see any of that in there, unless I'm missing it. Again, I skimmed through it, but I don't see that. And again, I'm not being contentious, but I just, you know, it helps. And the reason we have that comprehensive plan is so the city and our departments and operations can move forward. And and, and it's, it's not in there, and I don't know if that was an oversight. And I wasn't at the planning commission. I actually kind of stayed out of that because that's the planning commission's responsibility. But I didn't get any wind that they had cut that out. I don't know unless I'm not. It was not that. discussed at all as far as cut. Okay, was it, it was discussed. It wasn't, it wasn't presented to talk about. It was not presented. No. Yeah. One at one meeting it was way back. Yes, it was. It was mentioned. Okay. Complete streets in the planning commission, but it wasn't something that we talked about. Um, but it needs to be included in there. Mayor, if I, if as, I might. as I understand, the it's been a while since I looked at this yeah. process. 
but the uh, <coughs> uh, I believe we can amend this plan at yes. any juncture in the future. You certainly may. But we yeah. have to adopt it by the end of this yeah. calendar year. And we're we're going to be really technically since. I don't know if it was in the plan or not. It's 144 pages long. It certainly be, can, can be amended. In. Absolutely. <coughs> could, I, could, I, could, I, could I make a motion then that we adopt the Buchanan 2020 Comprehensive Plan for the City of Buchanan as an ongoing living document? That's a motion. Where is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Is there further discussion? You understand this is a plan. It's not a, a yeah. mandate to do anything. It's a plan to do things. Well, it, it, things change. Plans change. It was a plan that was dealt, that was worked on four or five years ago. Yeah, and, it's and been. I, and I think the whole process is convoluted anyway, because anybody that's worked in any kind of organization of size, your plans are changing all the time based yeah. on what your yeah. macro and micro yeah. environments are. And, and that's that's but how it's... But we're required to do this yeah. because of the states requiring us. Yeah. I want to also say before we vote that I agree with Michael, uh, the Complete Streets has been discussed every, almost every day someplace here in Buchanan. We discussed it today at, uh, at Great Buchanan. And uh, uh, I more or less said, yeah, we're, we're looking at Complete Streets. We, we, we always are looking at it. Uh, and, uh, so I, I, that's very important that we do consider that. I will make sure that it's on the agenda the next well, planning commission. I'll be happy to supply that information, and I'm not going to I'm not going to stop the process. It's right. just I know yeah. this is yeah. important. Call the question. <coughs> question been called. All in favor of the motion signify seven saying aye. 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 Opposed no. The ayes have it. Next issue is the uh, somebody. I wasn't the ADS, uh, Delta, the Delta, yeah. Harbor. Yeah, uh, it's the uh, uh, ADS Delta. Yeah. So what, a, what a motion! A motion to approve the uh, annexation, the uh, change of um, from residential to R one. <coughs> and uh, so, um, a motion to approve that action. So moved. So and and a second. I'll second it. He moved it. I second it. All in favor, sing, signify so saying aye. 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 Opposed, <coughs> and uh, then they, <coughs> next is a recommendation for the council to take necessary action to rescind <coughs> recently adopted ordinance 383 of College Zone. Motion to start that process. So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. And second. Further discussion. Discussion. I saw several planning commission members shaking their heads when that was read just a minute ago. May I ask? Why you are concerned about? We just didn't know what the complete streets thing was. That's the first I'd heard of. No, on the. On the uh, you, you, that's the word. You were doing yeah. no, on the college zone. College zone. We didn't. Have, we didn't discuss anything about oh, continuing that. a discussion yes. in some area. We just yeah, voted yeah. to rescind and, and present it to the council. Committee council. Right. Well, so that, well, that rest, that wasn't the rest was just The rest was just embellished, Joe. Yeah. yeah, we didn't well, mention <laughs> having further discussion. Okay. So, a motion to direct the city attorney to prepare documents to rescind ordinance three eighty three. I made the motion and the second. 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 We, we have a motion. All in favor signify so saying aye. 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 Opposed no. No. The ayes have it. Um, well, what do we have to do, Ben? Well, Dave will take care of it. already said that earlier. Dave will yeah. take care of it. Yes, ma'am. Michael, what else do you have? <laughs> that is all I have this time. Okay. Uh, before <laughs> Mitch comes up, uh, we, we had some latecomers here in the student population. <laughs> And uh, we, we welcome you here. We require that you uh, stand up, face the camera here. Tell us your name, where you're from, what your major is, please. Uh, I'm Owen Browning. Sorry, we are, we're at the courthouse. We don't. We are naive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Owen Browning from Green Bear County, West Virginia, and I'm a sports business major. Uh, Colby Hartman, a uh, junior at Wesleyan, and I'm a business major. Where are you from? Uh, Boyer Tower, Pennsylvania. I'm uh, Tanner Graham. I'm from Pocahontas County, West Virginia, and I'm a marketing major. So if your friends back here, you're welcome. <laughs> Mitch, fire chief. Good evening. Uh, reported to you last time we were starting to do pump testing, our annual pump testing. That's being completed. All of our units passed their, pump, their annual pump testing, so we have that out of the way. 
Uh, we had about six guys who just finished a 40-hour core rescue class that was a requirement before they could continue on to do some other things. Uh, one, there was an article, I had some questions about the rescue tools that we had and the money that was appropriate. We have those ordered, but they have not arrived yet, so we have not received those, but hopefully any day. Uh, hopefully in the next couple weeks, our vehicle that was <coughs> damaged in an accident, uh, we've got everything settled. Hopefully it should be replaced and back in our service, hopefully within the next two weeks. And uh, I just want to kind of jump on the <coughs> bandwagon with Michael. Uh, sometimes it's tough to admit, but uh, there is a severe shortage of firefighters in Upshur County. I'm sure that comes to no shock to you, but uh, uh, today, for instance, <coughs> I had eight drivers, <coughs> excuse me, I'm fighting a cold. Uh, had eight, eight guys today that were that are drivers who are out of town for work-related stuff. Uh, I have my wife to the doctor. Uh, our, some of our new guys are babysitting. They have, they have young children. Uh, had eight guys today that are, are driver operators who for job-related stuff, we're out of town, we're unable to respond to calls. <coughs> we're down, we have about 20 some guys, so we're, that's pretty close to about half of our firefighting force who has ability to drive and operate. We're losing a lot of guys to work out of town. Um, there's been a couple of days where we have ran seven and eight calls. Uh, a couple of days last week, we ran eight calls. You, it's very tough for an employer to allow employees to leave seven, eight times a day. Right now we're approaching, uh, without doing any EMS, and Ron, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Without doing any EMS calls, <coughs> we're pushing 500 calls. I've worked for the Buckingham <coughs> Fire Department. I came here as a fire chief. Uh, I've been here 10 years. Uh, I think my first year here, I looked at number, and I came from a fire department that was pretty active when I came and it was borderline about a hundred and some calls. Continue, we're running five, we're up to right now knocking on uh, 500 calls. Uh, that's more, every year they make our calls the volume is going up exponentially. <coughs> we're not even doing EMS calls because we don't have the manpower to do that. So right now we've got a committee, we're looking, uh, we're trying to get creative and do some root recruitment <coughs> and attention, but Society is just so demanding on quality people. Uh, we have a lot of training requirements that the state and the government set forth for us to, to meet. Uh, we had a fire at Loudon Trailer Court. Uh, the Buchanan Fire Department went. I had four guys on scene of that fire, the members of the Buchanan Fire Department, for almost 30 minutes before they ever got any assistance. The first two guys that responded to that call <coughs> The driver of the fire truck was 75 years old, and the firefighter was with him was 63 years old. <clears throat> I've been a fire I've been a firefighter from this is my 40th year, and I'm telling you, it's not an old dog's game. I'm just <laughs> telling you, we're straight up. It's a young man's game, and that's the problem I have with a lot of our young guys who are firefighters. They're working, they have jobs, they're away, and, and you know they have family obligations. They're doing other things. <clears throat> Out of the, that fire at Loudon Trade Court, I know you're thinking, well, but. Our firefighters that are volunteer firemen are the same firefighters, whether it's Loudon's Trading Port, or the same firefighters protecting the city of Buchanan. So, as a Buchanan fire chief, I don't have a territorial line that I draw in the sand. <clears throat> Mrs. Smith, who lives in the, on Florida Street, can come across ill will and need the services of the Buchanan Fire Department at Keesling Mill the same as she can on Florida Street. So, my duty as a fire chief is to see that we can adequately protect our citizens. And it's getting very, very borderline to the point, <clears throat> and society's played a toll on that, that we can't. And I'm not, and, and it's a our county fire association is working on it. But before you can, you before you can um, solve a problem, first of all, you have to be man enough to stand up and admit you got a problem. When you're telling the public that, hey, <laughs> we're getting pretty stretchy, that's a hard pill to swallow. But. I'm being perfectly honest with myself, with you folks, with our, our farmer, you know, and I made a presentation at our last fire chiefs association meeting that, you know, as fire chiefs guys, you need to be honest with yourself. There are calls here every day that aren't getting answered <coughs> by, I'm not naming it by some fire department that it happened today to us, that, you know, we get bumped up to go to another fire department's call. And it happens a lot, that, not not particularly for us, I'm not saying that, maybe that's a bad example, but there are, every day there are 
fire departments that are getting dispatched to calls that aren't allowed, that don't get to that call that requires uh, the dispatching of another agency. I'll go back to the fire at Loudon's trailer court. We, we had seven fire departments from four counties and had about 23 guys. Hmm. Out of that 23 guys, yes, wow. yes, <laughs> four counties. We called more, some fire departments weren't able to come. That scares me as a fire chief of Buchanan Fire Department if I go to, because one thing we really like to be diligent on if we go to call is, what if we get another call? It just so happened that day at Loudon's Trader Court, you talked about some guys scrambling. We ran seven calls that day. We ran, while we had that structure fire, we ran another structure fire, we ran an automobile accident, and we ran a vehicle fire. Most of those were answered with two guys, myself and the paid guy on duty because the rest of our guys were tied up. We went through seven fire departments in four counties to get 23 guys. Now, you're 23 guys, well, what can you do with 23 guys? I want you to go back and think that the first relief that we got from the Buchanan Fire Department got on scene, it was almost 15 minutes before we got on scene, by the time, time our guys got there, because and we, we sent four guys. Those guys were there almost a half hour by themselves before we got help. It took us seven counties to get 23 guys. Out of those 23 guys, and I'm not picking, I'm not being critical, but some of those guys aren't firefighters. They, and for every fire truck to come, somebody's got to drive it. So if two guys come to a fire truck, you cut that in half. I mean, the four guys we sent, only two of them could fight the fire because the other two guys had to operate the fire trucks. We get guys that are, you know, some of these fire departments have guys that are retired and God bless them, trying to help them do the best they can. It takes old guys like me to supervise and manage and lead young guys on a career path. But guys, 60 years old, don't have any business in a burning building with an air bottle strapped on the back. And we're becoming very, 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 very critical in our manpower situation. We don't. And it's not the fire service that's losing volunteers. We don't have anybody in here that's involved in youth activities. I'm, I'm <coughs> sure. Who, who's the guy that's coaching Little League? It's because his, his son's playing. And it's just, uh, it's, it's a society problem. But we've got to fix it. We've got to have reliable people in the fire station, and we've got to have a competent amount of guys either on duty or off duty that we can hope that can be there to provide a service. And we're here to talking about the shortage, you know, we'll get somebody for the daytime. I, my guys are chomping at the bit to create this situation to you. Think about their situation on weekend. Pretty weekends, last Saturday, got right now guys are out hunting. If it's pretty, guys are riding motorcycles. It's just, it's just not in the daytime for a couple hours to peak. It's seven days a week, 24 hours a day that we're, that we're having a problem providing coverage. So I'm here, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not a doomsday prepper, but I'm just being perfectly honest with you. We've got to take a very, very, very hard look at increasing our manpower situation. It's critical. I, I don't think uh, Mitch, you're telling us anything that we probably all have been thinking about that, you know, we need more paid yeah. staffing in the fire department with particularly the demands that we have, as you say, a societal uh, issue today, especially with the requirements to go out for accidents and you know, you, as you said, you don't have a line of jurisdiction. When you get a call um, a mile away from the city limits, you're there, and you've got to have people there. And I think it's something that the county commission and the city council, we need to sit together and decide what we're going to do to provide the kind of staffing and quality service for this, for this department, for our citizens, both within the city in the county. I think, I think, it's, it's, I think it's, it's right, David, and I'm not, I don't like to speak on behalf of the county commission, I'm not there, but and, and we've had conversation on and off with them, but I think they need to, to jump on board because it, um, an, any fire chief in Upshur County who is honest with himself is going to tell you the same thing. Yeah. And I want you to think about those four guys were on that fire for almost a half hour by themselves, one at 75, one at 63. That day, two guys, we sent two guys to the hospital. They got sent to the hospital simply because they did too much. And I'm not yeah. talking about old guys. I'm talking about one guy was 30 and one was in the 20. They yeah. just physically 
for themselves. I think this is I think this is a high priority in I and, agree. The and the workshop well, that Michael's going to have with the fire and police fee, that's some of the answers that have to be looked at. As a fire chief, I'm, I'm responsible for every individual, and, here, and I'm going to be selfish, and let me explain my selfishness to you. I'm responsible for every firefighter on that fire ground. It doesn't matter if it comes from the Buchanan Fire Department, the Adrian Fire Department, the Western Fire Department, the Elkins Fire Department. It makes no difference where he comes from. I'm responsible for him. There are very, very strict rules and regulations about how you handle your firefighters. You don't send two firefighters into a burning building unless you've got adequate amount of protection out back <coughs> to cover those guys should something happen to them or you need to perform a rescue. The fire service has it basically in a, in a nutshell, it's called a two in two out rule. For every two guys in, you gotta have two guys out, plus you have to have a writ team. If a firefighter goes down, it takes on average eight firefighters to rescue one down firefighter just because of the equipment and the circumstances and the exertion that it takes to get to one because we never get hurt at the front door. It's always deep in a structure. As a fire chief, you've got to think long and hard about putting guys in that type of situation because, and Dave, no offense, but Tom, no offense, but there'll be, there'll be a lawyer knock on somebody and say, hey, I heard your, heard your husband got hurt in a fire. Or, 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 what kind of uh, safety regulation was your fire chief following? Well, they had three guys there. Really? You know, me and the mayor and the rest of you folks may be, we may be with these guys up at the courthouse. <laughs> I don't know what they call the law. Hey, but I got a guy in our fire department from Pennsylvania and he gets lost a lot by him too. <laughs> <laughs> but sir, I, 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 back to, this is my serious face and uh, it, it is a very, very, very critical situation. Everybody needs to be aware of it. Well, I think it's something I mean, it's something that we need to address and we need to do it. It's, uh, it's, it's true, isn't it, Mitch, that when, when fire calls here in Aptra County, that it takes three departments to go out just to provide enough firemen for one ordinary call. Is that right? When I first came, when I first came here, we were running uh, one fire department normally handled its calls. Yeah. Uh, uh, we went to automatic aid. Number one, automatic aid looks very good. That's a piece of paper looks very good. That's a mandatory for ISO rating. So we enacted that to keep our to help maintain our ISO rate. But right now we're dispatching three fire departments automatically to any structure fire and two fire departments automatically to any car wreck. We've talked about the, the theory about going to to go to four fire departments, but our theory is, you know, but for that time what did we get? Again, you know, I had four guys on a fire and it's almost a half hour before they got help. Now, in, in Buchanan, we're a different situation than the county commissioners are up there. We only have to worry about the Buchanan department and our Buchanan volunteers. The county commissioners, according to the code, are responsible for seeing that the citizens are provided fire protection by law. Well, the Buchanan Volunteer and Fire Department serves as part of Upshur County. Yes. The Buchanan yes. Volunteer right. Fire Department is a member of Upshur County. Yeah. 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 But they're they're, and if they and if they get hit with a door being closed in a fire station or something like that, or somebody walks in and says, "Here's the keys, gentlemen, handle it yourself," well, that's just going to mean that either their fire insurance rates will go extremely high, or they won't have any at all. Our so our top responder, and I say that by the guy who responds to most calls, who we rely on heavily to drive our fire trucks, left Monday to go to Florida and won't be back until April. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a national issue, volunteer. It, it is. It's not, and I want to go on record. And I told my guy, I don't want anybody in the community to think there's nothing wrong with the Buchanan Fire Department. We are a fantastic organization, and we have fantastic men. And that we have some brave, courageous, <coughs> tough guys in the Buchanan Fire Department. To be quite honest, they're fantastic guys. There's nothing wrong with them. We are just becoming a victim of society. I have a good friend in, that, in the fire department who's and he's, he's friends with the mayor's son. I'm not going to name his name. He has two kids. They both play soccer. He coaches soccer. That guy passes himself on the road sometimes going to, to, to do things for soccer. Yeah. And we have guys who have kids involved in 
any type of youth activity there is, and good parents are going out because they want to keep their kids involved in something so they're not running the streets and they're not getting involved in drugs. I did the same thing when I as a parent when <coughs> my son was young. So, you know, we've, we've got social circumstances, we've got vocational circumstances, and uh, again, we are going to have to sit down and take, I mean, we have talked and talked and talked. It, it's, it's time, we're, we're, it's time for action, folks. It, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm just laying it out there for you. So when you and I started volunteering me for the EMS back in 71, and, and you were a little bit behind that, I think, uh, couples didn't have to work both the husband and wife Absolutely. Either. Absolutely. And now they do, so it, it puts a strain on the families. And the and other, the, and the other thing, and this is another thing I'm proud of, the guys in the Buchanan Fire Department, and I'm talking about the volunteers, are very very intelligent people a lot of our guys are in managerial positions or in their job some of their job requires them to travel to go to different locations for their companies to check on things some of them are they're in managerial positions here locally and they just can't leave their jobs at a drop of a hat they have a lot of they have a lot of responsibilities and i tell you what if i may mayor council uh, we are now looking at starting the process again because of the last issue we had with our, our probation firefighter that uh, did not actually complete the whole process to restart in this process again and we are actually going to be advertising out of Buchanan to Clarksburg Charleston Bridgeport etc to bring in qualified firefighters for our department <coughs> but right now we're looking at one I would like council to seriously consider con uh, allocating for two firefighters for full time here at Buchanan to take that discussion seriously and we can figure out a way Within our budget to make that happen. I would also, well, three, I would encourage even more, but two, right now we're looking at one. That is not going to cut it. I think we need at least two, and we, if we, we can get three, is even better. And we have, right now we have, we are running, uh, right now we're down, we're running three shifts because of the, if we could go, we could make three shifts work and have two guys per shift. That um, would, that's not, that's not fantastic, I mean, but for Buchanan, it would be pretty darn good. And the, the thing that you get, the, the thing that happens, we rely very heavily on our career, far, far paid guys to come in on their days when they're off duty. And that's, you know, you think we've got two guys. Well, that just gives us more guys in the community to, that we can rely on to come in and, 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 and assist. I'd also ask the like, council to consider, um, even when we go to our next discussions on the uh, budget, whenever that meeting has for the, the, the three, four, however many firefighters we need besides just the one, uh, for permission to go ahead and start a dialogue with the county commission on how perhaps the two can uh, come together to address the issues, not only within the city, but with the county on certain issues. Um, I wanted to do that, but of course, within our capacity, can't do it without the consent of the council um, to do so but if you're willing to allow us to do that I believe the County Commission is understanding their issue as well and would be willing to start that dialogue and see how we can address these issues uh, Mitch brings a very important thing and I didn't realize it and we've got so many regulations within the Fire Civil Service Commission that we have to adhere to does not make it easy for us just to hire somebody we're looking at almost a two-month process to get all the testing, the volunteers that are required for the, uh, the, the physical testing, uh, the written testing, the background checks, the whole application process. It is really a, uh, a ridiculously bureaucratic bunch of Yahoo that really ties our hand. Good and, choice of words. Yeah. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm with Mitch on it because every time I hear the, the, the fire sirens going off, it scares me to death to know that they may not, they may not be by themselves, and they may not get the help that they need from the county. I'm going to get off that, that because it really does, and I'm glad Mitch finally it stood up and, and, and we recognize the fact that we as council do what we can to help Mitch out with our department, and we as a council go ahead and start that dialogue with the county to see how we can address this issue. That's all I have to say on that. I heard that whole stuff over the scanner with the, the loud and trailer court stuff, and I mean, I was... Uh, feeling for you that day well I, I, I do think we've all recognized and we need to step up to the plate and I, I agree Rick that we ought to do two instead of one and I think that the discussion we're going to have in December in regard to the fire and police fee and I think we've got to throw the comp comprehensive BNO in there too it's all 
it's all the same platter to some degree. We need to have an understanding that you have demands out there, and the volunteerism is down dramatically over <coughs> most of the fire departments, and that means basically you're going to have to have paid staff, higher you know, numbers of paid staff. That's just a reality that we have to deal with, and I think residents recognize when they're paying a fire and police fee that that is probably one of the most um, supportive areas that most citizens say, hey, I'm willing to do that for protection. So I, I think it's, I thank you for making your presentation. And Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Mitch, I think you got our attention. Thank you. <coughs> Jerry? We're going to take from your department from the fire department, Jerry. Just a <laughs> Consolidated Public Works Board met on the point card. Uh, they approved the request, Nick Kennedy, on behalf of Boy Scouts of Buffalo County, to conduct a food drive on this Saturday from 9 to noon and use of Jawbone Park afterwards. Also approved, uh, and some of this is, has already happened, but had also approved closing part of College Avenue for a Halloween parade for uh, Buckingham Academy School. Approved a request for Festival Fridays for the <coughs> use of Jawbone Park from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. May 29th through September 11th of 2015. Accepted uh, the letter of understanding <coughs> with uh, Dan Carr uh, for some development of Trail Road Avenue. Received a thank you letter from North America, or Rally North America, for providing uh, Jawbone Park for their lineup for their departure from Buckana. Also approved the <coughs> provision for the cemetery rules and regulations. Uh, the denied a request uh, for a handicapped parking space in a uh, no parking zone on College Avenue. And uh, rescheduled our next meeting will be a combined meeting <coughs> to uh, both November and December's meeting following on holidays. So the next meeting will be December 9th at 4 p.m. Um, street department activity. We have continued working on Gateway East. The sidewalk portion is completed. Next week we'll work. Uh, I've got a couple guys that will come in and, and start getting the, the light poles erected, pulling wire, that kind of thing. Also, uh, we'll be working throughout uh, the, the winter during the season days to do some still that kind of thing to complete that project. So the project's not completed, uh, but the concrete on the Gateway East portion is completed. We still have a little work here in front of City Hall uh, that we want to go ahead and do since we did the sidewalk, and, and one is uh, replacing the, the flagpole while we're here. Uh, but the sidewalk is completed. We've completed paving an area on Beach Street and began the paving on Hart Avenue and then the weather. Uh, as soon as we get a break in the weather, we'll be back <coughs> about another day and we can have Hart Avenue completed. Also completed the uh, digging out the trenches on Pocahontas Street where uh, the sanitary crew had the, uh, replaced the, the sewer line. We've got, that was excavated, got the cement poured back in and again, uh, pending weather. We'll be doing an overlay on that block of Pocahontas Street. And like I said, I, I, I'm optimistic that we'll have two or three marginal days that we can block off before they close the plants. Um, transfer station waste board meeting this evening. Transfer station permit renewal. Uh, approved the solicitation of quotes to lease purchase a couple garbage trucks. Um, had a couple months worth of reports. I'll just kind of skim over for you, save you the mundane. Uh, September tonnage was 1,372 tons. Uh, money was $114,289.26 for October. The transfer station tonnage was 1,350 tons. And the grand total money was $112,020.42. Recycling uh, received 60.08 tons for September. October was 57.94 tons, and the third quarter report for recycling, we did 163.62 tons. And that's all I have in my system. <coughs> question from Jerry. Good question. College Avenue. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the no parking space on the corner of Ritchie and College Avenue, right in front of that house that's, that's there. Uh, I saw almost two wrecks this week because of something being parked there. And you can't see when you're pulling out of Ritchie Street to your other <coughs> street if anything's coming down College Avenue from, from Marion that way. Uh, and it's even bad when nobody is in that space, and I think it really needs to be another space up to, so we can see. But it's a safety issue. Uh, I don't know whether, uh, I know the city patrolmen can't patrol at all the time and give tickets and citations, but that is a really dangerous intersection as far as pulling out, getting to on, on College Avenue. Uh, and I've almost been hit myself and I saw two vehicles twice in one day almost get hit there. So it might be something you want to consider looking at that. I'll check the, uh, yeah. the setback when we're on. Yeah, it's a we'll check. Okay. Uh, when do you hope to get the new lights up, the poles? The new light poles? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Pam. Like I said, it, it, a lot right now is depending <coughs> on weather. Uh, that's something we can do, uh, even if it is raining. I mean, rain and snow, the guys can still work on it. Um, probably going to take them two to three weeks to, to get it all done, the wires, all the wiring pulled, and to actually have the lights on. My concern is that we start getting the deep snows like we did last year, <coughs> that those, if those, pole, those things aren't covered, it can be a liability. Basis. Well, mm -hmm. we try to keep cones on them, but you know as well as I do, our cones end up all over the world. <laughs> you gonna stick around right after to later in the meeting and you don't leave. No, I'll be here. Okay. Okay, Jerry, thanks. Jay Holland, city engineer. <coughs> okay, we'll uh, quickly go through these as always. Uh, the FEMA generator grants. I spoke with the project administrator a couple weeks ago and uh, everything looked good and we should hear an announcement from them within the next 60 to 75 days as to the status of that project. Uh, Chapman, the water treatment plant improvement project, Chapman Technical Group's continuing with the uh, engineering and design. Talked with Greg today and it's about 75% complete. Um, the spill prevention response plans and certifications of the city's above ground storage tanks, that's a result of Senate Bill 373. Uh, which is a result of the January 2014 spill in Charleston. I'm continuing to work on the six water storage tanks in the city and one chemical storage tank uh, at the water treatment plant. Those spill prevention response plans are due uh, December 1st. Working diligently, they're very difficult. <laughs> We've got a couple done, five more to go. And then as soon as that's done December 1st, uh, then I get the one whole month to uh, complete the inspections and certifications of those previously mentioned seventh above ground storage tanks. So it's a busy last quarter for me. Um, McDonald Route 20 lane widening project. Uh, I finally sent down the sanitary sewer department's second review of the project. So now uh, the DOH has both the water department and sewer department's <coughs> comments. They're going to incorporate those comments into their final design. And I've requested an additional site meeting to meet with them once they incorporate those uh, uh, comments that Sam and I had so that we make sure that we're all on the same page because there's some uh, issues with uh, the depth of their proposed storm lines that may interfere with some of our water lines and some of Sam's sanitary sewer lines. But again, the project is on bid on track to be bid uh, January 2015 and start construction in February. Uh, Gateway East, boy, Jerry took all the thunder there except for um, we had the bid openings for the LED retrofits that you all approved um, a couple uh, council meetings ago. We had three bidders on each contract. There's two contracts, one's for East Main Street's lights and one, the second one is for Main Street light. The apparent low bidder for the East Main was Capital Tri-State with a bid of 23,435 for those 43 uh, LED lights. And Capital Tri-State was also the low bidder for uh, Main Street, which is the retrofit for the 22 lights. The bids came in at $34,215 total for both contracts, which is about $1,500 less than what I uh, presented to you all a couple months ago. And then once we get uh, the lights purchased and installed, 
then we will also get the additional $2,300 back from First Energy for their energy efficiency program. So the total project's going to cost just under $32,000 for the LED lights. Um, to answer Jerry and Pam's question, uh, there's a four to six week uh, delivery time on the Main Street lights and a six to eight week delivery time on the East Main Street lights. They're coming from two different suppliers because they're two different types of uh, manufacturers. So whenever Jerry can work that into his schedule. So we should receive lights sometimes in December or January before we actually see it <coughs> lit up. Uh, which brings me to the last one, the Army Corps of Engineers Flood Control Project. I still have not heard anything from the Army National Guard. I hope to get in touch with them within the next couple of weeks. I spoke with uh, a couple concerned citizens in the DNR about this project. Uh, the citizens who, who read the articles in the paper were concerned that uh, you know we were going to be doing work above the dam, and, and that is not the case. All the work would uh, be below the dam for four and a half miles of the Buchanan River. Uh, the DNR official and myself actually took a, a site visit today and we stopped at uh, four or five spots where we could easily see what the, the Army Corps is, is, is looking to have and, and they have some questions and concerns and he's going to prepare a letter and send that to me and then I, he would like for me to forward that to the Corps of Engineer, which I'll do upon receipt. That's all I have. Questions for Jay? Thank you, Jay. <laughs> Counselor? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, several updates. Uh, it's always good when we report that something that we helped lay the ground uh, for earlier has taken its next step. And today the investigators involved with the four police agencies that might come ultimately to comprise the Upshur Lewis Drug and Violent Crimes Task Force met. I got an email late uh, this afternoon from Matt Gregory and he said it was a highly productive uh, meeting and that the uh, Everybody is on board with wanting to uh, retool the mutual aid agreements. Of course, there already is one between the Upshur County Sheriff's Department and the City of Buckingham's <coughs> Police Department. But we're going to be looking at mutual aid agreements with the Lewis County Sheriff's Department and the City of Weston's Police Department as well. Uh, in the past, the mutual aid agreement, even between the Sheriff's Department and the City Police, has pertained primarily to emergency matters. And all four agencies want to uh, kind of take that word emergency in a different direction, more in a collaborative training, sharing of information kind of way to battle the drug problem that we know exists in our two counties. So more to follow on that. But David, are we still open for Phillips and Barber County? Is there anything that we need to do to help We had the first exploratory meeting, the uh, Agencies represented in Upshur, Lewis, City of Buchanan, City of Weston, all agreed that they would see how things went in the trial period with these investigators' meetings, and that when the bigger group came back together with Bill Elenfeld returning to Buchanan on February 2nd, that would be one of the things that would be taken up at that meeting. Um, I think there's a lot of deference to the uh, police authorities uh, that are involved with this to create an organization that they think is going to be the best functional uh, unit. And uh, again, they just had their first investigators meeting today to start sharing information. Um, so I, I, I think we'll just kind of play it by ear between now and February 2 and see what comes out of these next two or three investigators meetings. But uh, Matt, I'm sure, will report more back at uh, the next meeting when he's here. Does that, does that help, yeah. Mr. Thomas? Um, I would remind Council that the Angus suit is still uh, proceeding and the mediation in that matter is scheduled uh, two weeks from yesterday, November 19th. I'm sure we'll be getting some more uh, information about that and I'll share that with you at the November 20th meeting. I've had several additional back and forth with Peter Brown on the Sudden Lake uh, franchise agreement. Uh, remember that thing is scheduled to expire December 31, so probably at the next meeting we're going to be looking at a draft ordinance uh, for the council to consider on first reading the renewal of the sudden link that agreement. Uh, the Armory Joint Use Agreement that was in the packet last time is in your packet again tonight. Mr. Doss indicated before the meeting tonight, as I was checking notes from the previous meeting, 
that uh, we still haven't received a fully executed document back from Charleston, but that the CVB uh, had approved uh, what I had uh, drafted as far as the collateral agreement. And uh, gosh, it seemed like I was going to tell you something else, but that's uh, all I see jumping out at me. I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. Questions for Dave? It brings us to Correspondence Union Elementary School request a 5K map. And uh, I don't know if anybody got a chance to compare their map to one of our approved routes. My understanding is we have a couple of approved routes. And uh, I don't know whether this conforms to one of our routes or not. Does anybody, can, can anybody help me here? Sorry. Can I ask you? Please. I'm uh, Megan Bacorn. I teach at Union Elementary. And um, we proposed this as a idea for help helping our students make our way to D.C. And one of the maps um, that was forwarded to me by Teresa Summers, I think, is one of the approved Okay. Ones. If it came from Teresa, then you've answered the question. <laughs> Map number four. The copier cut it off. Yes. <laughs> the one where you wrote, we would like to try this map? Yes. Okay. That'd be it. That's a good indication. Then I'd recommend to you that we approve this request. With all those nice signatures, I don't know how we could not approve this. Yeah, I'm I'm so, no, 54. <laughs> and actually, one of them is sitting right over there. Hey. Yeah. Oh. I have a motion from Council on Neil. Is there a second? I would second that. Motion made and second. And any further discussion? Not all in favor signify so saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Um, letter of agreement from the CVB David has spoken to previously. Uh, you have a consent agenda is approval of minutes of the regular meeting of October 16. Approval of building and wiring permits. Approval of payment of the bills. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So, motion made. Is there a second? Second. Pass. Pam seconds. All in favor signify second. saying aye. Aye. We've already had G1 and G2. Take care of those. Brings us to comments and announcements. Mary, you got anything? Oh, I don't even know. No. Okay. Pam? <laughs> no. Uh, Rick? No, I'm good. Tom? Uh, well, I don't, I'm not going to say your thunder. Thank you. No. Ron? Oh, you know I do. <laughs> I've had several calls and talked to different people this week. Uh, Dave Cook uh, called me and he was concerned about the safety of uh, East Main Street. Not enough room to drive uh, two ways in the park and the safety of pedestrians on, on East Main Street from here to uh, the college. I told him I'd bring it up and, and uh, just bring it uh, to council. So. Here it is, and we'll see what we can do that. He also suggested surveillance cameras on the uh, lamp post, which would uh, help control some of that stuff. And I, I said uh, that is definitely not an option. <laughs> Maybe if we put LPRs on. Yeah, I know. Uh, another, another was a, a residence at Nine and a Half Cleveland Avenue, uh, and an issue with their pit bulls and stuff, which I believe we've had that before. Uh, and and uh, that issue should be taken care of by uh, uh, probably the zoning officer or somebody like that. Is that right, Mr. Mayor? I think so. Okay. And then Mary Goday uh, saw me the other day at the high rise and she says that the, they need more parking. And uh, she suggested that uh, Nona Street where the sidewalk goes up there, they've got a green area between a sidewalk and the high rise. She would like to have to get that paved and to angle cars in from the street, but it would require something from uh, Public Works, I think, in order to have access to drive over that as a sidewalk or something uh, to that effect. Uh, I told her I'd find out what we have to do in order to get that accomplished. The parking is a real problem over there, especially since they have yeah. so many people that are, are working as aides over there now. And she was also concerned that uh, through the Office of Emergency Services that there are no public certified <coughs> shelters in Buchanan. She said, where do I take my people if they have to get out of here? There's no public certified shelters. 
Uh, she said, if there's a hurricane, a tornado, or if there's a, uh, another flood, and, and I said, I don't know, but I'll bring all this up, and we can uh, hopefully discuss that in future uh, uh, sessions. It seems to me that, we, that Jim Ferry has a list of he, he shelters. Does. He does. Okay. Well, I thought we had at least one. I thought the Chapel Hill. Chapel, Chapel, Hill. Hill. Chapel Hill and the Presbyterian Church are both warming okay. stations. They're warming and cooling well, stations, depending on what time of year. Anyway, Mary is also concerned. She's a good citizen, and that's where we're bringing all those up. And uh, as for now, um, hope trick or treat went well. I didn't even go out. God bless. Yeah. Had to take your mask off yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, we had, we've had some discussion on this Nona Street thing, have we not? We currently, Mayor, we don't even plow <coughs> Nona Street because the very reason they park both sides. And right now, and our plow trucks, uh, we can't safely navigate down there without uh, hitting the vehicle. And, and the same can be said on the, uh, just, to, just to get on the parking on the street, East Main Street. East Main Street, I would compare East Main Street and North Florida Street very close. Yeah. Uh, North Florida Street, of course, with the curb not being there, what green space we have just keeps get, getting uh, eroded by people continually parking further and further over into that green area. And with the vehicles <coughs> being water, uh, truck mirrors being water, it's extremely difficult yeah. if you meet particularly a school bus on North Florida Street. Yeah. The, the Nona, if they did have parking like that, head in towards the building, that would mean you probably could plow that at least one way, right? Possibly. Yeah. You know, I'd have to look at it. Yeah. Right. Well, would you would you like to go look at it sometime? I'll be glad to go over with you. Yeah, we can take a look yeah. at it, see if there's what can be done there. Okay. Give me a call. Okay. I don't know. <coughs> it's a resolution you're going to pass here on the... <laughs> David, do you have any comments? Well, on the follow-up of what uh, Ron said about Cleveland Avenue and the pit bulls, David, that would be really uh, the police department. If they're having a problem there, aren't they the ones that should be notified? And, uh, Under Ordinance 300, Mr. Thomas, there is a procedure that... If a resident makes a complaint, we have formed compliance for dealing with all of those various issues, dogs running at large, vicious dogs, that kind of thing. Uh, it can be initiated either by a, another resident or if the city police observe the situation, they can initiate their own complaint. It, it would not require uh, Mr. Clemens to be the only person that could, that could affect that. But, uh, yeah. that I mean, the, the, the problem, that's the area where the pit bull attacked the lady's young, young dog. dog oh, yeah. And, and yeah. you know, that the, there are ordinances that are covering. Uh, evidently, if you have a pit bull and you're going outside, it has to be muzzled. Uh, there are definitions of dogs that have to be uh, handled in that way. We have some very specific language in Ordinance 300 that addresses that. You're correct. I think, I think so, the residents ought to be aware of that and that they need to, I mean, if some people are scared. I will mention for for the record that uh, that has been brought to us not only on behalf of the recent incidents, but our municipal judge has come to us to to revise the commission, the animal control. Uh, I can't remember the whole name of that commission, which hasn't met since Animal Care and Control <coughs> Commission. That's what it is. It started care. out as an initiative. Pa Paul Mackey didn't like cats running at large. <laughs> <laughs> he was a council member. Yeah. And uh, we started looking at that, and there were other people complaining about barking dogs, and then people came forth that had concerns about dogs being tethered and chained and you know, all those kinds of issues. So we spent probably a six-month period of time, uh, a committee of us, uh, and instead of calling it animal control, we put care first because there's a lot of folks that want to care for their pets. So it's, it's very comprehensive. If you're not acquainted yourself with Ordinance 300, there's a lot of good stuff in there. But you're right, Mr. Edwards. That commission hasn't met in, I don't know, at least five years, well, maybe longer. Well, the people that sat on it, for, particularly a couple of them, are no longer with us. And um, the folks that uh, DNR are no longer members of the DNR. So I will tell you now, though, that next week, 
And it also has something to do with a meeting that was held last uh, last week at the, uh, I believe it was at the Moose Lodge regarding the same issues. So the community is now back in support of this. We're going to pull it together. I would encourage any members of, uh, of the community, of city and the county, because this is also not just inclusive for the city, um, to attend those meetings as we discuss that and I pull that, uh, that commission back together and get her into full gear. Mrs. Keogh would be an excellent person Robert Keogh, to include yes. yeah. yeah. discussion. Yeah. Is there a provision that uh, vicious dogs be registered as <coughs> vicious dogs? There's a whole procedure, Mr. Keogh. Okay. It depends. Mm -hmm. not, not, I mean, you can have dogs that can behave viciously that aren't of a a particular breed yeah. that is well, I, yeah. especially prone to that. I mean, there's some there's some uh, Chihuahua. fanatical chihuahuas out there, you know. <laughs> uh, but but in all seriousness, it, it, there is it, it, once the, there is a, there is a registration requirement for certain breeds. Yes. Okay. What kind of community do you do you have for that? It's a commission. It sits up two residents. It has a veterinarian. It has a DNR, and it had the. Um, um, not the animal control facility, but the uh, Humane Society director, um, all of whom are no longer in their position. So I'm now contacting them to see if they want to get back on there to, uh, in, the, in the, that official capacity. Now, having said that, the mayor can also put, appoint county uh, <coughs> citizens on there. They don't have a vote, but they do have an input into the process and into the language of whatever uh, may come out of that. Um, keep in mind, it's 2002. It was actually brought up in 2001. As you mentioned, it took a while to do, and a lot of things have changed in that decade. Sure. Um, so the, a lot of these things do need to be addressed, particularly when it comes to animals. Well, one thing I might suggest to you is that we actually, uh, and it's a pretty voluminous ordinance. It's it maybe 20 pages long but maybe run copies for all the council members. That would be lovely. And, and, uh, be lovely. Let, let everybody yeah, take a peek at it during the morning. next month. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I'm still on my point of comments, I guess, and the I brought it up because one of the, I, I met with Robin Keogh about a week ago, and you know, yeah. she's a very committed person in respect to uh, how, I think we all are, how animals are, are treated. And we need to be, we need to be re responsive and and when there are complaints that are, you know, very concerning to the residents, we need to take the appropriate action to, to make sure the ordinances are followed. But I think we all need to understand that, you know, we, we need to treat animals with dignity and care. And uh, I think that uh, uh, sometimes when you talk about uh, dogs that are tethered with heavy chains and don't have the access to necessarily water or food there's a lot of citizens who get upset about that and uh, it's almost like you need a watch a watchdog society to say hey do a better job what, what so, that's the only comments i have to <coughs> well this vacancy you have here there's a person i think be excellent to be on that committee sitting right in here and uh, it's that? elisa mills She's been an excellent person to be on that committee. All we would need is a letter of interest. I have gotten two letters of interest already, one from Maria Bray, who's also very much committed to the animals, and we would, we would accept any and all letters of interest to sit on that commission. And they have to be a city resident to do that? No, actually, but to vote <coughs> and to change the ordinance as if it needs to be changed, yes. That comes to here, right? Yes, but to have input into the language and all of that, no. Uh, the mayor has the authority, according to the ordinance, to appoint them onto the commission, but not as voting <coughs> members. Advisor. I find interesting that the spirit, but, yeah. the spirit of what we were doing at that time, we didn't want to uh, confine <laughs> issues relative to dealing with the pets, uh, whether they're domestic or feral, as being oh, just the people in the city uh, know about these things. We wanted to solicit other folks from the outside. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Mayor's comments. Um, I'll try to make this as short and sweet as I can. I know that the rumors have been out there. Now, I want to clarify, <coughs> and this is an open letter to all the residents and employees of the city of Buchanan. Those of you who know me well know that at times I don't control my emotions very well. This has been a tough thing for me. After several months of consultation with my doctor, 
have come to the conclusion that it's in the best interest of the city and from my own personal health, it's time for me to resign from the office of mayor. I've struggled with this because I care for this community. And I hate being a quitter. But I'm reminded from previous personal experience that this community will continue to thrive without me. In an attempt to lower my stress level, I've tried to cut back on my involvement and allow our very competent staff and employees to carry on, which they have. And I'm con confident that they will continue to do so. However, I do not feel that I'm measuring up to my own personal standards for the job. <clears throat> and the people of Buchanan deserve better. My last day in office will be at the end of the day tomorrow. November 7. It's not written here, but I, my signature has to be good tomorrow. It's a payday. <laughs> <laughs> Our city administrator, Michael Doss, has proven to be outstanding in his ability to carry on the day-to-day -day operations of the city as well as managing the city's finances. I have every confidence in Michael, and I sincerely hope that City Council will continue to support him and allow him to lead the city into the future. Rick Edwards, since becoming city recorder, gotten to know him a bit, has proven to me that he has only the best interest of the city in mind. And I'm confident that he will perform well while taking on the role of mayor as provided by city charter. I've said so in the past and will continue to believe that the city has outstanding, dedicated employees. We elected con officials can brag about the successes of the city, but at the end of the day, our success must be credited to the folks who actually do the work. Yeah. Providing good, safe drinking water, properly treating and maintaining the sewers, maintaining and making improvements to our streets, sidewalks, and parks, beautifying our city with flowers, providing excellent police and fire protection, and last but not least, the friendly, courteous environment provided by the employees at City Hall. Here, I choose to paraphrase Steve Engel, who was a former pastor at Chapel Hill United mm -hmm. Methodist Church. As mayor, I have made 100% of the people happy. Some were happy to see me elected. <laughs> Some were happy with my performance as mayor, and the rest are happy to know that I'm leaving. <laughs> I want to thank all of you for giving me the opportunity to be mayor by Cannon. It's one of the best, if not the best, little cities in the whole world, and I love it. Finally, If my actions as mayor have caused harm to anyone in any way, I most sincerely apologize, and I beg your forgiveness. However, for any good which you have seen or experienced during my time in office, I give all the credit and all the glory to God, for I believe that all good things come from God. Thank you. Thank you. You can't make any more comments, can you? We wish you well. And we're adjourned. Thank you. Dave, we have a resolution which I'm not going to be able to read. Would you it's very please? Quick. Resolution number 2014-18 of the Council of the City of Buchanan. Whereas Kenneth T. Davidson, being the duly elected mayor of the City of Buchanan, has announced his resignation as mayor, effective at midnight on Saturday, November 8, 2014. And whereas pursuant to the city's charter, the city recorder, Richard W. Edwards, then shall serve as the mayor of the City of Buchanan until the next municipal election. And whereas, while discharging certain municipal functions, the city recorder may act simultaneously in the dual steads as both city recorder and as mayor, 
but certain other functions require a separation of duties then requiring that the city recorder duties be performed by the assistant city recorder for example countersigning of checks witnessing the mayor's uh, signature bond matters grant applications contracts etc and whereas the mayor and whereas the city formally established the position and redefine the duties and powers of the assistant city recorder pursuant to resolution number 2000-08 and which duties and powers were expanded pursuant to resolution number 2010-02 and whereas the duly appointed assistant city recorder is Amberly Jenkins who has served continuously in that position since it was established on September 21, 2000 pursuant to the foregoing resolution number 2000-08 now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Buckhannon as follows. One, that the City Council hereby formally and in all respects accepts, recognizes, and now memorializes A, the resignation of Mr. Davidson as mayor, B, the ascension to mayor of Mr. Edwards, and C, reiterates and acknowledges the duties and powers of Assistant City Recorder Mrs. Jenkins. Two, that this resolution, or a copy thereof, to be provided to any and all affected persons or entities to establish and clarify the positions, duties, and functions of the mayor, city recorder, and assistant city recorder of the city of Buckhannon, including but not limited to financial institutions, state and or federal agencies, insurance carriers, and any and all other affected persons or entities reasonably soliciting the information referenced herein. And then, of course, the vote on the resolution and the certificate of passage and enactment. If the council will approve this this evening, the original document that Mr. Edwards has should be signed by all of the uh, members of council. Be a motion. Would, uh, entertain a motion. So moved. Resolution number 2014-18, and it calls for a voice vote. We all voice vote or a hand vote? Voice vote. Voice. Okay. Oh, by name. Rick, you'll call roll. Ron Gale. Hi. Mary Alba. Aye. Myself, aye. Uh, Mr. Thomas? Aye. Mrs. Kapari? Aye. Mr. O'Neill? Yes, aye. It's uh, unanimous, and uh, I'll, I'll be here officially for another couple days. It was supposed to be Friday night, but you made it Saturday night. I mean, Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. <laughs> Saturday morning? Yeah. That's 12.01. 12.01 on the 8th. See, I told you I'm totally confused. Uh, we'll have um, to reprogram. I, 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 I want to clarify something to you. I, I've, I've been getting some get well cards. <laughs> while, while I appreciate the get well cards, my doctor's advice is that, that I need to reduce my stress. And, and in doing so, uh, I'm not ill and I'm not in peril, but I'm going in that direction if I don't cut something loose, and my wife will kill me for this, but um, I couldn't decide. <laughs> the mayor, job, major source of stress. Wife, major source of stress. <laughs> and I couldn't decide. So I flipped a coin, and she lost. <laughs> She gets to put up with me. So I thank y'all. Again, we're adjourned. Thank y'all very much.